Okay guys, so here is a scan that I've taken of a, um, of a patient and I'm just gonna click on model. So when you get the raw model, uh, you can see the it's got quite a lot of artifacts here. Now if you try and print this with these artifacts, it's going to make a terrible print. It's also a, quite fiddly to get rid of these artifacts in Mesh Mixer, so I like to do it right here in the Serex software. First thing you do is click on edit model, click on cut, and just the same as, you know, this is the Serex software, so you're used to using all of these tools. And you just make a few cuts and get rid of all these artifacts. Now what you're trying to do is leave around about a millimeter, a mil to two mils above the gingival margin. Make sure when you double click, you're not cutting off any teeth here. Otherwise you'll have to reset and do the whole thing again. So for that final click, just point the blue line away from any areas that you want to keep. And sometimes you just have to go in a few times to get the full cut. Okay, here we go. We've got rid of all those nasty bits. Uh, okay, let's get rid of this here while we're here, just to be pedantic. Okay. Right, got that. Lower jaw. How's this lower jaw looking? Again, a lot of nasty artifacts. These are going to be terrible when you print. So we'll just start cutting. Snip, 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 snip. Come around the other side. Again, you want to have to ang you want to have this angle such that when you make the cut, you're not cutting anything away from the opposite side. If, for instance, uh, let's go over here. If, for instance, you do a cut like this. I was lucky that time, it didn't snip anything away from over here. But there actually, are. let's reset this. If for instance, you cut like this, you'll then take away everything on the opposite side as well. So you need to be a little bit careful when you're doing these snips that you don't snip away anything that you want to keep on the opposing, uh, uh, on the opposite side of the arch. So I like to come at it from this almost occlusal aspect or occlusal view. That way you can be pretty sure you're not going to take away anything important from the other side. There we go. Same with the lower, uh, same with the lingual. There we go. That should be okay there. See, I nearly snipped that end off. Let's curl it round. And there we go. So we've got a little tag here. Let's get rid of that tag. Any more tags? No, that's okay. A little bit jagged there, but that's not the end of the world. There's a weird tag over here. Let's get rid of this tag. There we go. Okay, so now we've got a couple of pretty nice arches. And these will print really nicely. Oh, those are bothering me. Let's get rid of them. Smooth that out. Okay, that's good. Right. We'll go back to draw margin. Doesn't really matter where we are, but now you can see we've got a really nice model up there. Uh, so click on down, click on export. I used to export them all at the highest resolution with all of the triangles. It creates a massive file. Um, I think they're about 100 megabytes uh, each for each arch. You can do this in Mesh Mixer and it'll be slow, but it will work. The problem is then when you send the file to your print software, 
it for me on the Moonray software, it takes 20, 30 minutes to actually for the Moonray software to render all of those triangles to a printable file. Because I'm using this only for making diagnostic models and um, suck down splints, I'm going to use the reduced resolution, which gives me a really small file size. I'm going to export this as an STL to my desktop. OK. And export. Brilliant. Now on the desktop, we should have these two files, upper and lower. We'll open these guys up with Mesh Mixer. You can just drag them in, drag them in. Generates the meshes nice and quickly. Pretty easy to scroll around. They're quite small files. And you can see there's plenty of detail in here to be able to make a suck down or just a diagnostic model. Okay, so we're going to work on these files one at a time. So let's do that. Make these a bit bigger so we can see the eyes. Okay, we'll work on the lower first. So first thing we do is press Control A. Select everything. Edit, extrude, or you can just press D. Change the direction to the Y axis change the end type to flat and then adjust the slider well wrong way wrong direction we'll go the other way and here you go now the most important thing is that you extrude this beyond the blue margin there we go I mean you don't need to go that far you can go that far that's okay there we go that's excellent so we've got all of the model extruded, we've got a nice flat base. Click accept. Now at this stage you may have some funny little things over here. Analysis, inspector, auto repair all. There we go done, edit, that's all good. Right, so that's the lower done, and we'll now get rid of that, if I actually, we can then export this into a print lower on the desktop, save, got the upper, so upper exactly the same thing, control A, press D, y, y axis, flat, slider goes the other way this time, a bit too much, let's drop this down, not enough. Drop it back up again. Let's go a smidgen higher. There we go. Okay, that's good. Accept. This time, however, you've got all these uh, these shadings, these diagonals, and that indicates that the model is actually um, inverted. It's upside down. So Control A again. Not upside down. Inside out. Edit. Flip normals. And now we're right side up. So you can see we're all good. Uh, analysis, inspector, auto repair, just in case. Now, the other thing to note is if uh, if you print this model, okay, it's a solid model. To be honest, a solid versus a hollow, hollow model for this sort of size is going to cost you cents in printing. So I just don't bother hollowing it out. It's just easier and quicker to um to do it as a solid model. You can hollow it if you want, but I mean, it just saves you time. Okay, so if you print this model, uh, you're going to have a hard time peeling this off the base plate because there's nothing, there's nowhere to get your spatula under to flick this up. So what I like to do is just click on one of the views, go into the plane cut, 
and then just snip a bit off the back. Click accept. That's going to cut that little bit off. Now, when you go to print this, it's going to have um, a, a, well, a notch that you can get your spatula under and just flick it off the, uh, flick it off the build plate. And that's a really neat trick, nice and easy to get these models off the base plate. Otherwise, you're standing there levering these things off and it's just too hard. Again, file, export. Uh, what do we call this? Print upper. Print upper. And you can see how it's really, really quick to generate these STLs because we've made a model with fewer triangles. But again, you've still got plenty of detail here. Um, for sat downs and more than enough detail here just for diagnostic models or um, if you're going to import them into um, BSB to make um, stents, uh, you know, surgical guides, all that sort of stuff. Okay, minimize this, open up my printing software, which is down here. This is the Moonray software. Obviously, Form 2 will be different. Uh, will remind me later. Okay, highlight both of the printable models, drag them on, and here you have them. So you can see one of them hasn't got any cutouts, and you can see how this is going to be really difficult once it's printed to flick this off the build tray. This guy here, when we flick him around, and move him over here, move that guy over there, when it comes to getting this off the build pl plate, you can get your um, spatula in underneath here, twist and lever this guy off. So he's gonna be much, much easier to print. So just stick them in the middle of your build plate, wherever you want, you can print these horizontally, it doesn't really matter. And this is gonna take about one and a half hours to print. And that's how you do it. Excellent, easy peasy. Happy printing everyone.